Alright, so I guess uh, one of the first things that people want to know about a band is like how they got their name. So why don't you guys kind of give me a little bit of insight into uh, how Indigo Kid became like your band name. Uh, well, Indigo Kid is actually, it's like a new age philosophy. Um, it's like uh, people who've never been reincarnated before. So like everyone has auras and they're like different colors like red, blue, and it's sort of like a reflection of your personality. Um, people who have indigo auras were never reincarnated before. So it's like their first life ever living and it's just a bunch of weird kids with ADHD who live in our generation pretty much. <laughs> That's what an indigo kid is. <laughs> it just kind of freaked me out because it's like, oh shit, I'm gonna be an indigo child. <laughs> you know what I mean? You go through that like, like yeah, you I know be... why I'm weird. Yeah. I We had this band in high school called Pontius Pilot. We did that for a really long time and that ended up turning into, later on, uh, that ended and then turned into the Ember Astronauts. And then I moved to Seattle and just took a break from music pretty much altogether, like from playing in bands. And then I uh, moved back and I was just ready to start something, but have full creative control of that something. And, you know, hey little cousin, <laughs> should should start a band. He was, he was that's in, how it went. Yeah, yeah. He, he, was totally. in a, he was in a band called Fuzzy Purple Priest at the time, so I kind of had to wait for that. But. Waited for that little branch out to die, and then you stole them away from it? <laughs> Is that how that worked? It was dying already. It was <laughs> failed project from the beginning. Yeah, and then this is the second band where we kind of just picked up and started traveling again. Like, we were just in uh, Spokane a couple times. This one? October. Yeah, it was October, I think, yeah. And then we were in Olympia, so we've just, in Bremerton, yeah, we've just been like kind of traveling with this band, so hopefully we're looking to like pick up, you know?
what would you guys really describe yourselves as? Okay, honestly, but when people ask us what, ask me anyway, what our sound is, um, I kind of get a scoff at my answer because I'm always like indie. And they're like, indie can be anything. Yeah, <laughs> and that's, that's like why the, I always add the extra stuff. It's like. I don't like to like a little bit of sir. I don't really like to curate it though. Yeah, if you get like too specific in like your oh what kind of sound are you? Oh well we're indie <laughs> punk. That's also kind of that surfer, you know. Let's go board and kind of music. And they're like so. What? <laughs> so you sound like. Yeah. So you sound like who? You sound like the Arcade Fire with a hip hop twist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see what I mean? Like there's a little. I feel like indie has its own kind of genre of music though. Yeah. I mean, its own. Describable sound, like if you say you're an indie band, yeah, they don't go wait what that narrows it a little yeah. bit at least. That's so like, the thing about punk, I love to call our, ourselves punk because like in a Sonic Youth, maybe Dinosaur Junior, yeah, post punk yeah, sense, exactly. Yeah, we're like we would totally fit in with like those kind of bands in my opinion. But for like the punk purist kind of people, I feel like we would just piss them off. Oh yeah. Crap. If you called yourselves punk. Yeah. If, and they're like into hardcore punk or something in there, that's what they're wanting to hear. Yeah. <laughs> they show up to your show and they're like, what is this? Yeah, what? They've all got their, you know, jackets with all the patches yeah. on them. Yeah. Exactly. Like a PDR patch, <laughs> like a picture of Gigi <laughs> Allen tattooed on their arms. Yeah, yeah. Personally, I like you guys' music. I think probably my favorite song was all Hell King Seamus. Yeah. I think that one's really cool to me. But I think a good thing about you guys is for people that don't normally listen to indie, like if they listen to you, they wouldn't like, oh, I can't listen to this stuff anymore. Let's turn off the radio. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because also, indie's getting a little bit more, I'll say, mainstream. You hear a lot more yeah. indie on the radio so. nowadays with like, you know, Capital City. Um, M83 had Midnight City too, and that was just kind of like, that's been in a couple movies, so I think it's being accepted in the popular culture right now. Yeah, why don't we talk about like influences and like, you know, who do you guys look up to? Well, like, growing up, well, uh, most people who know me already know this, I loved like Nirvana in school, like, that was pretty much just in a nutshell. Like, I mean, I liked The Killers and I liked stuff like that, but Nirvana was just like a common theme and that's where I learned everything about like punk music, which is hearing like Kurt Cobain. Usually yeah. someone's like, oh, my older cousin. I'm like, Kurt Cobain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On YouTube, taught me about punk music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I also love like Sonic Youth, Dinosaur Jr., you know, and that all just kind of like molds together into kind of like, I guess I like noise rock a lot, you know, like not too noisy because I also like that really like, I, I think I like that wordiness, you know. But instead of saying I'm looking into your eyes, it's like I'm glaring into the windows of your soul or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like everything's so yeah. complicated. Same and thing, but just a different way to say it. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. kind of makes you feel the long deep. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. poetic way that some people aren't going to understand. <laughs> Garrett, what do you think? Best, uh, best bands kind of influence you? Dinosaur Jr., Nirvana, Black Sabbath, Foo Fighters, and right now I'm really into Sea Cats. <laughs> oh, come on. I I, I know. that band. <laughs> yes, he did. It's kind of but funny how, how you said Foo Fighters, because you almost kind of look like you could be a Foo Fighter. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Has anyone ever told you that before? You kind of got the Foo Fighter look. Sweet. Like a, like a mini, like, Munchkin Dave Grohl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. Dave Grohl, but with but Cabbage with Patch hands. Kid Dave Grohl. Yeah, Dave Grohl with little hands. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's funny.
Two years from now. Hopefully on the Coachella stage. <laughs> okay. You, okay. That's him, my dream. For him, it's Coachella. That, I mean, that means like right after this interview, we're up the door. The EP is going. You guys through. are on your way. You're yeah. just flying high. Nice. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, good. I just want to be like in a scene that I like and to be actually making money. I mean, yeah. I know that's hard oh, to ask okay, yeah. for being a musician. You my know? own true goal. Is to be able to make enough money to get from to get from gig to gig. Yeah. Eat, sleep, I, gas. I, I just want to go on tour, yes. a real tour, like, because you hear bands all the time, like, we're going to Idaho and back, or we're going to. Yeah. You're just like, oh, that's not a tour. You know, like, it, yeah. it is kind of a tour, but it's like, oh man, I want to go to, like, friggin' the East Coast. You know? So you think in a couple of years, you guys will have EP and LP probably out of the yeah. way, and then you're oh, thinking yeah. about maybe. You know, hitting those tours up with it. Yeah, yeah, and then oh, be on like a real we could, tour. We could do that by the end of next year. That'd be great. Cool. <laughs> nice. And, and obviously, I want to play with some of the bands we've been listening yes. to a lot. Yes. Like, we could go on tour with them. That would be awesome. Like, I would at least like to. And it's mainly because, like, you know, you hear these bands and you're like, man, we kind of sound like that. And, uh, I mean, we, we, could, we could play on the same stage as them. We could yeah. make them look good. Yeah, right? <laughs> I would love to play like Chastity Bell or like Dude York. Sea Cats. Sea Cats would be fun. I'd really like to play the Sea Cat. But yeah, you know, like all these Seattle bands that are just like cool as shit. You know? <laughs> I'd love to play with them.
roles within the band. So, like, who writes the music, and like, where do you come up with the ideas for the music? He immediately points to. Uh, Eli. I I play drums. <laughs> yeah, no, no. He, I play he, drums. Okay, my role is I do the everything with like, the writing <laughs> shit like that. And his role is he tries to act like he does less than he actually does. <laughs> yeah. He helps I don't try. a lot more. I do do no, a lot less than I know. No, that, that's <laughs> that's the thing. I think he's just a natural born like slacker in the sense that he like gets to the point where even if he does, he wants to make it seem like he doesn't. <laughs> like, even when he's working, he's like, I'd, I'd rather say that I no, wasn't. No, dude, I'm slacking you off. You're you, totally fired. You, you inspire me. <laughs> <laughs> See? Now, now you do more for the band. I inspire you? Yeah. Bitches take baths and then you. <laughs> I've taken a bath since I was five. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Are you hear me? Okay, we're ready. Is that good? Ah!